Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren. Today I'm going to do something I've never done before. and I haven't seen a whole lot of videos on it on YouTube. I'm actually going to do spaghetti squash, but we're going to do it sous vide. So, let's, I'll be right back. I'll show you how to do spaghetti squash sous vide. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter. Sous vide and chilling from fire and water. All right, guys, if you uh, listen to my podcast or watch my podcast on YouTube, um, you probably heard that I'm starting to do some keto so I can lose some of this mass right here <laughs> that I've built up over the years so I can have my back surgery. i um, got really bad back problems. I've had them for a long time, and it's gotten to a point where I really need to uh, get those taken care of, and the doctor wants me to lose a few pounds before I do that so hey keto is one of the better ways to drop you know a good amount of weight pretty quick i've been doing it for a little over two weeks and you get kind of bored after a while with eating the same old stuff so you want to kind of mix it up and one of the things i went to the produce stand this week and they had some great looking spaghetti squash it's um, um i guess it's normally a fall a vegetable in uh you know the northern areas but down here, you know, our, our seasons run a little bit different and they seem to be really fresh and really good looking spaghetti squash. They're not really, really big. They're just a good size. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can actually make this sous vide and uh, have a nice side dish with your regular, regular meals. So first thing I'm gonna do, I've got my sous vide uh, bath heating up to 185 degrees. That's what we're gonna, actually I'm gonna, I got this set at 188 degrees. So I want it a little bit higher than 185. Uh, vegetables you have to cook at a lot higher temperature due to their cell structure being a lot different than meat proteins. So you really need to have the, uh, the water at least over 180 degrees, preferably 185 to 190 to, is where you want it to, to cook. We're gonna cook it for about an hour and a half and um, see how it turns out. First thing I gotta do is cut this thing in half. So I'm gonna cut it lengthwise and then we're gonna have to scoop out all the interior stuff that's in here. So I'll be right back. I forgot my spoon to dig this thing out and I wanna make sure I have the garbage can close by. So let me be right back, I'll go get my spoon. All right guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. I have, um, it's probably been a, quite a few years that I've ever cooked spaghetti squash. And um, so um, I haven't eaten it in a long time either. But from what I remember, there's not a whole lot of flavor to it. So you can actually do a lot with it. You can actually, it takes to other seasonings really well. So you can use garlic and herbs and all kinds of different stuff to uh, season it up a little bit. So, uh, and from what I understand, it actually is better than taking the zucchini noodles and making for, for pasta type dishes. So it actually is uh, quite, quite good at that. So I'm gonna take my big old, you know, uh, Victorinox butcher knife here and I'm gonna cut it lengthwise right in half and I got the big one here because it's it's kind of a stiff squash so it's really really hard it's not uh, really easy to get the knife through so you got to put some pressure to it and you want to use a big knife for that and spaghetti squash just like you know pumpkin and acorn squash it's got a lot of seeds and guts in there so you just pretty much take your spoon and just scrape this stuff out you don't have to go too deep it comes out really easy you can actually take these seeds and i've heard people say you can toast them up like pumpkin seeds and all that i'm not big on doing that there's, there's really not a whole lot of seeds in here so you might get like a handful of seeds if you do that with this it'll take you a, a few uh, squashes to get a, a, enough seeds to actually make anything out of but I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this out I'm doing it directly into the trash can because I don't want to make a mess on my table just to show you how easy it is to do it doesn't take long at all just take a regular spoon and it's done I mean just that quick you can leave some of the strands in there. It's not going to hurt you. I mean, it's all edible anyway. So that's all we're going to do. Let me go do this other one, and I'll be back and show you what I'm, how I'm going to season them. 
All right, guys, got them all done here. And it's really going to be simple seasoning for me, uh, especially just for the sous vide. I'm just going to drizzle just a little bit of olive oil inside it here. Don't care about the outside at all. Just a little bit. And I'm going to take a little bit of just a dusting of garlic powder or garlic herb seasoning here. Not a lot. Some citrus pepper blend. And a little bit of pink Himalayan salt here. So not a whole lot, just enough to give it a little bit of taste. And that's it. And then we're going to put these in our vacuum sealer bags and vacuum seal them up. All right, I'll see you at the sealer. All right, guys, I got these all vacuum sealed up. And one of the things you might want to do when you're cooking vegetable sous vide is buy some of these... Um, either use some some kind of weights from recommendation from uh, Jason Logsdon, a friend of mine who runs uh, Exploring Sous Vide and Amazing Food Made Easy. These are weighted sous vide magnets and what you can do with these is you can take your anything that needs to be weighted down pretty much anything that you're cooking sous vide here. Go ahead and take this out. Take out the thing. I'm going to show you. See how this kind of floats? Well, I want this to be down as far down as I can. So I'm going to actually put this towards the side and put one of these maggots, magnets there. And it'll hold that right down. You see how it's holding it down there underneath the water? I got one on the inside, one on the outside. And these are food safe magnets. And we'll do the same thing on the other side here. We'll just kind of push the magnet down here and on one on the inside one on the outside and now I got them both underneath the water no problem no float issues whatsoever so just uh, you can buy these in packs of um, this one was a pack of four but you can buy them in packs of ten I think as well and they're on Amazon and I'll show them to you in the link below so all right we're gonna put the lid on this it's still not all the way up to uh, temp. It's at 113 right now. But as soon as this gets up to 186 degrees, it'll start counting down. So I'll see you guys when it's done. All right, guys. These uh, spaghetti squash should be done. That water is hot. Just so you know. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead gonna pull one of them out here so we can take a look at it um, feels like it's cooked to me all the way through shouldn't be a whole lot of moisture in the bag might be some but a little bit not too much dry that off just kind of see what that looks like So it's looks done to me. Now the trick to these is from what I understand is you just kind of grab the side and just kind of twist this stuff around and then it pulls apart just like spaghetti. And you just pull it right out. And you just scrape it off the side. And there you go. So that looks to me like about perfect coming out really really easy and what I'm gonna end up doing is just putting this out on the pan and maybe adding just a little bit more salt pepper garlic to it and maybe a little bit of olive oil and that's it and we'll be done you go ahead and take a bite of this and then we'll be done here still warm it does feel like spaghetti, that's for sure. Well, the done this is perfect. Still needs a little bit more seasoning, so. 
I can taste the salt and pepper and stuff that I put on it. But it definitely needs a little bit more seasoning than what's in there. So check it out, guys. Sous vide, spaghetti squash, totally keto friendly. Great side dish, great for substituting your pasta. Check it out. Try it. I'll put the recipe below. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us on the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.